So hello YouTube friends. <laughs> it's uh, another one of those beautiful days uh, that we have had. We've had a lot of rain in between times but now I'm having a sit down and a cup of tea because I've had quite a busy day. So I'll tell you about what I've been doing. I've The main thing about this video is that I've strung up all the onions all the onions were dry in the shed and I'm going to do a little voiceover about that. That's the main bit. I've done a couple of other things as well. Um, it, I was a little bit bothered that um, Duane was upset about the uh, hens that were in the uh, little shed in solitary confinement. There wasn't just the white hen, there were two hens because there were two hens getting out of the garden. So I've just spent an hour with a big stick and gloves on and my boots down at the bit where I suspect the hen, hens, two of them, were getting out. And mindful of some of the other comments that I read, someone said, when you're looking for something, look up as well as down. So when you're looking for a space where the hen's getting out, look up. Now, so I have, I've looked all the way up and all the way down, all the way along the length of the fence found a few places that were just about big enough for a hen to get through but they didn't look like but I mended them and I fixed a, a fair few more little gaps I'm not sure any of them are where she was getting out however I've let them both out now and uh, so we'll see they were very pleased to be out did a little flapping and then uh, went and had some of the hens food that was good so they're out and then because it's such a beautiful day I've been needing to go and see to the bees for uh, quite a while. Uh, they need to have a treatment uh, put on for um, varroa which is a horrible mite that bees get and it's quite endemic now across the UK and across the world actually. Uh, it's a terrible thing it's uh, it's really uh, damaged uh, beekeeping in a big way the varroa mite. So I went into the bees, got suited up and everything. I can't photograph that when I'm doing it because I'm doing it. And I got uh, a good look at all the bees. They all look very happy. Um, and uh, I put the Apigod treatment on. It's easy to do. Just pop that onto the uh, frames. And everyone looked quite happy. They were a little bit more buzzy than usual, but I was I had my suit on, so I was fine. So I've done the bees. I've seen to the hens and then when I'm having a full when I'm having a full day in the garden like this, I usually open the gate to uh, Eileen's little weedy bit and let her come into the garden, especially at the moment, as there's um, I haven't cut the grass in ages. In fact, once I've had this cup of tea, you know I might actually cut the grass because that's um, that's a long overdue job, but it's been too wet. I simply haven't had the chance to do it. Okay then, so this is just a little introduction uh, and you know a couple of things that I've done today but then the main bit about this video is the onions and so come with me on a journey about the onions. If, if any of you are following on with this you'll have remember way way back in the spring uh, me planting the onions. Well here I am harvesting them and roping them up uh, and so uh, it's a good job, it's a job well done and it means that that space in the shed where they're all drying I can have that space back now and give it a good clean out. So so many jobs to do at this time of year um, but hey ho we'll get through them. So I'll have a cup of tea and a sit down and then I might just mow the grass. So here is lovely Norma and just over here excuse me Norma is lovely Sadie and the other two are around somewhere as well. Okay so I'll see if I can get a picture of the hen for you. <laughs> free The free hen. All Dwayne's doing that, not mine. <laughs> right guys catch up with you soon. So after I lifted all the onions I put them to dry on a rack in my shed and today I judged that they were properly dry enough to rope up and so here we go. Um, I'm taking off the the papery, the dirtier papery outsides and just cutting off that little uh, dried up root. Uh, just, I'm just taking off one little layer of, um, 
of the skin if it's a bit dirty or marked or damaged. And also, while I'm doing this, if there are any damaged ones, I'm just going to put them aside in a, a, in a different bucket and I'll just use them straight away. So the garlic as well, I did the, uh, I prepared the garlic for roping up as well. And this was much, much drier uh, than the onions. Uh, they've been uh, harvested for longer, I guess. So I'm just outside here in the pavilion, I call it. <laughs> um, it's a, it, was, it still is a beautiful sunny day. What is it now? About five o'clock in the evening. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I got all the onions then prepared and white, red and garlic. And now I'm making a rope uh, of onions. This is a method my dad taught me, in fact, how to do this. And it helps the onions to dry out more and stores them because you need to um, store them somewhere um, out the way and hanging up's a good way. So I've got a, a very strong piece of string. This is incredibly strong nylon string. It won't break. I used to do it with baler twine, but I've got this stuff also from my dad. And I'm selecting onions. The very big ones go at the bottom. And then, so you take the neck of the onion and wrap it once, twice, three times through that double layer of string. The string is attached to the top of the upright of the pavilion on a nail. Um, and it's just at a nice working height. So that's what I'm going to do. And the next onion goes in that gap that I've just created there uh, until... Well, the reason to stop is if the thing gets very heavy uh, and, you know, it's going to pull the nail out from wherever you've got it or, or if it's as long as you want it to be. These onions are still, still need some drying out and so they are very heavy because they're quite wet still. Uh, but they will dry out a lot more where I eventually put them. So then with just an ordinary pair of scissors here, I'm just cutting off the tail, the, the, the dried uh, top of the onion, which is now no longer needed because it's woven into that uh, string quite nicely. So I did um, the white uh, onions there. Oh, yeah, Prudence coming to check on progress. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's careful to, if you're careful, you can select smaller and smaller and smaller onions. And then when you want to use one, uh, once they're lovely and dry, you just choose the one you want and either pull it or I snip them, in fact, uh, away from the main rope. So just a bit of a trim there. That'll do. They're very heavy, very heavy. So I lift them down and then because that top one is, uh, isn't being held on by any, all the other onions are being held on by the onions below. So I just cut that string to length. I've got a lot of that string. And then I'm gonna tie, I think I tie two or three knots here really tightly. And I do them tightly because the onions are still gonna dry out a bit more. And so I don't want the, um, the top two or three onions coming loose. So I tie them, I tie a knot in the top to make a loop, and then I'm gonna hang that up. You can see I've just edited that bit. I'm hanging it right there on the left-hand side in the pavilion. I've got another piece of string going now, and I'm going to rope up the red ones. So I carried on doing this, it took me a few hours to rope them all up, to clean them, rope them, store them. But I've edited this down for you, so you haven't got to watch hours of me roping onions. So yeah, this is the red rope now. It's a good place to do it outside here. And you just put the onion through, wrap it round once, twice, three times, and then push it down and get the next onion to anchor it in place. Snip off all the dried ends. I don't snip them off, just, you know, just next to the next onion. I'm not snipping them right close to the string. So there we are, there's a red one now. I like red onions, I like making red onion marmalade. 
which is an easy thing to do. Just chop up a load of red onions, cook them very, very, very slowly with uh, balsamic vinegar and a little bit of sugar. It's delicious. So now I think this one I'm going to... Oh yeah, I'm just tying up the red ones there. Good two or three knots with this very strong string. And then a, a loop at the top. And then we can add that to the, the growing collection. <laughs> so the last one I'm going to show you then is the garlic. The garlic was much drier because it's been uh, harvested for longer and stored inside. So the, um, the necks of this are, are quite dry. And I've only got a few of these left now. Um, and so I made a short run of garlic just to store the garlic. It's really, really delicious garlic, much stronger than the stuff you get in the shops. So of course I had company the whole time I was doing this. There's Norma and Prudence and Rita and Rita was just there and Sadie was around somewhere. So once I'd got them all roped up, I've decided to store them in my woodshed, which is under cover so they won't get wet, but it's quite windy so they will dry. <laughs>